Okay, guys, we are on the 920s. 318 closed chamber. This is our four barrel uh, manifold development head. What I did is I spent about two hours porting an intake and exhaust and uh, mild chamber work. As far as the chamber, you can see I did the DV. What does he call it? Plateau? Mine's a little different, more of a, a radius into the exhaust. You can see we hit it with a little dicum. It's uh, relatively rough, right? You see the, the dicum go across the plug, into the chamber, around the chamber, across the exhaust, right up to that radius, okay? We've got a nice, nice swirl action. This was taken at 600 lift. And our swirl at 600 was 3,000 and change. Let's take a look and see what the bore looks like. Okay, it looks quite good. I would say that even looks better than the first one, which I, makes sense to me. I used an extremely aggressive rough burr, so it's a very rough port. I would think that would help. Okay, you can see the valve did get a back cut, which probably should help a lot flows at least the low left right we've got all right you know what I didn't clean that blue this blue right on this edge right here that's old okay this blue here is new I should have cleaned that better sorry guys as far as what we've got here that whole um, swath of blue looks like it moved over to the right a little bit in the bowl itself, it looks pretty decent. You got a little touch on the other side. When I say quickie rough, that rough out, it was extremely quick and extremely rough to the point where uh, I thought my maiden India DeWalt was going to light on fire. That's how um, how bad it was. Okay, the exhaust. You can see I didn't go nuts. All right. It's got no texture at all. I did have to put a valve job on. The guys were so bad it was almost impossible to do a valve job. Horrible. So it's close. I was amazed it really didn't leak bad on the bench at all. In fact, it was quite good. You can see I didn't even take all of the uh, paste, ooze, uh, ooze, boop. paste ooze lines out. Okay. Got quite a bit of work on the roof. Took a lot of the bulge out. Now, I didn't use any Sonic at all to port these out. I'll show you what I did. You know what we're going to do? Let's change let's change position a little bit. Okay, you can still see it's small, but it has been opened up a lot on either side of the, the bowl. Now, my rule of thumb porting is something like this. You can take a hundred thousandth off everywhere in the port and not worry about it breaking through. Right? If you don't have a Sonic, that's probably a good a good amount to use. Okay, the pinch did get some work. Notice the roof of the pinch is narrower than the floor of the pinch. And it looks like at the very bottom of that floor, I missed the I missed the bottom. See how, how it gives neck down? Now you have to be careful on the roof because this has got the same push rod holes as the open chambers. Let me show you. Okay, this divot here, that's over almost a hundred thousand. Now, this is full of dirt, right? But that's about a hundred thousands less material than you have here. So, if you're, you're sonicking or you're using a uh, Higlison uh, E-Tool, you'll have plenty of metal here, and you'll break through the top, which is what DV did, and I actually did on a couple ports on the open chambers. I had to epoxy them. I'm not interested in doing that with these. I want to keep them a little bit less. I wanted to see, you know, basically somebody that uh, doesn't have a flow bench, doesn't have an ultrasonic, but has a grinder and some tools to measure with, what you can get out of something like this. I think I was relatively successful with that. Let's take a different look at that intake port. 
Okay, lighting is still a little hurt. This is my older light. It's it's not really happy. You can see I didn't go crazy. The, the valve job has just got a tiny top cut and a lower cut, and I blended most of the lower cut in with the burr. The bowl itself did get widened considerably. Now, how you widen without worrying about blowing through? Let me get uh, the calipers and let me show you. Okay, may not be that easy to show you guys, but I took the calipers and I measured it to the other bowl, okay? Now what you do is you take you take the original bowl measurement and you set the caliper to it. And then you machine one side. Let's say we do this the right side here. And you can do it until you get your hundred thousandths wider, okay? And then you do the same thing to the other, and when it's all said and done, you should be about two... 200 thousandths wider. Now in reality, it doesn't even look like I took that much out of this. It only looks like it's about 100 thousandths wider than the original the original bowl size. I was also not interested in making a hole in these. So, even though that's the way I was doing it, it doesn't look like it added up to that much. But it gives you an idea of a way to do it. Same idea with the exhaust okay you can take you can take a decent amount of metal out without worrying about it but same thing as far as the are this one was really bad the exhaust guide is so worn out it's very hard to uh, when you first put the stone on all you get is like a, a crescent moon because it's so far out and I said I wasn't going to even do the seats when I lapped them they were they weren't flat angles they were they were curved from the valve moving around so much which is one of the reasons it flowed as well as it did for our first test you know basically a radius valve job from the old seats all right this is my new can of dicum it's got a prettier color blue i think i know a lot of you guys like pretty colors notice i didn't waste much time on that uh, that guide boss I basically made the trench on both sides. You can see on the right, I didn't even get all of it. I missed a bunch. Okay, same idea with the exhaust. Okay, you made it a little bit wider on both sides. Didn't go crazy with that bulge in the roof because that is the thin spot. So you can take a decent amount of metal, amount of metal out. You can probably make it perfectly flat if you have a Sonic and you know what you're doing. Notice how rough the texture is. Should I show you which burr it was? Sure, why not? Okay, pretty nasty. Designed for taking a lot of metal out in a short period of time. Like I said, it's still two hours worth of work to do this. Now, was it worth my time? Well, let's take a look at the flows. You guys can tell me. Okay, 318 closed chamber, stock flows. Okay, this is uh, first cut. I didn't even write it on there. Let's, uh, let's scribble that on. How'd we make out? Well, these pluses and minuses are in reference to these. You got a minus, plus everywhere else. That tends to happen to me. I think completely stock usually gets is a little better than what I get after I do my porting work. Notice how much different your swirl curve is. Wow. Now remember, in order to get some area around that guide, you got to take a lot of metal off the center of cylinder because that side is, is choked off a little more. So what does that do? It gives us less swirl until she finally loses it off the short side and then she starts to go nuts. How did we do as far as flows? We got some decent gains, even at just 0.2. Okay, 175. So 300 is still better than we could get out of the, com the completely stock one at 600 or 700. Okay, so these are all gravy at this point. Our high point was 191.9 at 0.35. Doesn't that seem low? It seems low to me. But... Take a look what happens with our swirl. We're still going around the short side at that point. As soon as you go off the short side, right, it's not using the periphery of the valve as much. 
it does make sense that it'll lose a little bit of flow, doesn't it? Okay, so this swirl curve is actually quite good. I don't mind having some action in the middle. This is actually better as far as I'm concerned. Okay, as far as our air speeds, you gotta remember this is zero development. And somebody's gonna say, oh, well, you know what to do because you did the open chambers. They're not exactly the same as open chambers. They're gonna react a little different because it does have a closed chamber, okay? And uh, those ports are not identical, I don't think, to the, uh, to the open chambers. If somebody knows if they're identical, they use the same cores, the same port cores, let us know. So these pluses and minuses are in reference to these speeds, okay? Minus, plus, plus. Notice how much higher we, we got on both of those. And it was we have much more area there now. Okay, at point 0.6, we're, we're up. From 173 to 190, okay? Okay, the roof. Center of the cylinder stayed the same, same speed because it has a lot more area now, okay? This side, I didn't need to increase the area as much. Didn't It actually went down, okay? They are nice and close together, but those could definitely use some work. Had we do on the short side, plus, minus, minus. These were quite good, right? Relatively even. We got a little more speed here, a little bit less in the center, and it actually lost a bit on the cylinder wall side. So we're down on both of these. Okay, so let's take a look at our exhaust and see how we did with the exhaust. Okay, now, before you say, oh, Charlie, that stinks. All right, it's not a fantastic valve job. It's an extremely rough port. Now, the, the rough texture is going to change your boundary layer. It's going to literally, literally shrink the port quite a bit. But I wanted to see what I could do. Someone who doesn't know where to put textures and stuff like that. All right, how'd we do? These pluses and minuses reference to this. Minus, plus all the way down. All right, at 0.35, we're beating its best, okay? Not bad. How did it look when I put a port on it? At 600, 174.4, not bad. Let's see how we did as far as our air speeds. Okay, according to our air speeds, it should be a big winner, right? And these numbers in reference to these numbers here, all these plus, 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 minus, plus. It literally is basically better almost everywhere, okay? Should be really moving a ton of air. What's holding it up? Probably the texture quite a bit. Now the valve, let's, let's show you guys the exhaust valve. Hard to see because it's so dark, but that's what it looks like. Why does the exhaust have an evaporation ridge? I don't know, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Let's see if you guys can tell me why it's. I don't think it's a bad thing. You guys can put that in your uh, in your comments. Okay, so as far as getting something we can test a four barrel on. We're only 190 CFM through our intakes, whereas the ones I sent to DVs were more like 230. They still need quite a bit of work and even to be uh, a decent test head. In the comments, let me know what you want to see me do on these. I'm going to have to go through with the Sonic and start taking some measurements. But uh, what you guys can do is... Let's take a look at the flow sheet one more time. If you wanted to do this for a street engine, that means, i.e., street lifts, I would say anywhere between 500 and 600. Take those numbers, run them through a calculator, and give me an idea of how many, how many horsepower you can make with this head, as long as you feed it correctly. I think it might surprise you. Knocking on 400, I would think. Depends. Depends how if you do it well enough. Let me comment on the chamber. Okay, I didn't mention this. This did get hit with the burr. Notice it still has a bit of a lip around here. I'm not going to go nuts on it because I'm still... 
I'm still figuring it out, right? So this got a little bit here, a little bit here, and that's it. Okay, this is pretty much the way it came from the factory, all right? It's got a big notch here. If you you work on that, you probably gain a little bit of exhaust flow. In reality, it shouldn't be machined out like that. It should be a little bit more of a ramp into that valve seat would work better. All right, guys, 15 minutes and change, looking at some old junk that we're gonna use for testing. Appreciate you guys hanging out. I'm hot, grouchy, aggravated. What a week. Can't wait to get cleaned up and just hang out with Wiffy and hold her hand. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.